This lesson is going to be on solving linear systems graphically. So the next two or three lessons, we're going to solve linear systems in different with different methods, graphically, substitution, elimination, and we'll go through each one of those in subsequent lessons. Now, the first thing you need to know is what does it mean to solve a linear system and what is a linear system? So a linear system just means that you have two lines and you're trying to find this point here, which is called the point of intersection, sometimes a POI, a point of intersection. And a point of intersection has X and Y coordinates. So it is a point. You have to find the X and the Y value in order to say exactly where the what the solution is. So this would be the solution to the linear system. Okay, so the first one we're going to do, like I said today, is graphically. So graphically means you're going to graph them. So in order to graph them as accurately as possible so that you can get an answer that you can actually see, and you're going to see that graphically is probably the most unreliable method unless you have extremely good graphing skills because obviously not every answer is going to be like 1, 2. It could be 1.375 or something like that, in which case it's really hard for you to determine that from a graph. So let's graph a few uh, questions and I have a couple of word problems, a mixture problem and a distance speed time problem, which um, are ones that often give students a little bit of headaches, even teachers. Okay, solve by graphing, check your solution. So you graphed lots of things, lots of lines in grade nine, and this is going to be no exception. Nice, easy y equals mx plus b format here, right? So remember m is your slope and b is your y-intercept. And remember that slope can always be written as rise over run. And if there isn't a number there, you can put a one. So 2 over 1 is still 2, so that's my rise, that's my run. And if there's a 1 here, well, that's 1 over 1, right? Rise over run. So I'm going to graph this as accurately as I can to try to find where these two lines are going to intersect. So 2x plus 1, I go to 1, my y-intercept, and I'm going to go up 2 and over 1 and up two and over one. And if I go right through all of those points as accurately as possible, two over one, two and one, two and one. Let's get this right on, because if you don't get it right on, you're going to be a little lost on the end here. Okay, so that's pretty good for my pencil. I got to adjust for a little bit of width for my pencil here and there we go so you should put arrows on the end and you should label your line y equals 2x plus 1 and the second line x minus 2 so i'm looking for a y intercept of minus 2 so i'm here and the slope is 1 so up 1 over 1 up 1 over 1 up 1 over 1 and i'm going to go through and these little dots here and how am I doing here hard time seeing it's bright okay so we're kind of here okay so this is y equals x minus 2 and where's the point of intersection it should be right here so mine doesn't look like it's right on could be just off a little tiny bit and because the answer is minus 3 and minus 5 so maybe you're a little better at, with the ruler than I am and um, I have old eyes so I might not be right through the dots see look I'm off a little bit here right should have been up a bit so right like that okay so my solution is solution is minus 3, minus 5. Notice I have coordinates. And to check it, I'm going to substitute in minus 3 and 5 into each of these equations to make sure that this point satisfies the equations. And by satisfying, 
I'm saying that this point is on this line and it's also on this line. So if you have two lines, there's only one place they can intersect, right? And we'll look, we're going to look at the different ways lines can intersect. Maybe just briefly looking at it, we can have two lines that do this. Right? You can only cross in one place. Lines don't wiggle back and around. So if you get more than one solution, something is really wrong. So one point like this, if they're parallel lines, there's not going to be any solution. We're going to talk about this again a little later. And the other option is that they're the very same line. So the... Um, there's an infinite number of intersection points. They're the same lines. Okay, so back to this one here. Oh, we didn't check it. So to check, we're going to look at equation one. So this one, so I'm gonna say y equals two x plus one. Left side equals y is minus five. Right side equals two x plus one. And I'm going to put in minus 3 for my x. And that's going to give me minus 5. So left side equals, whoops, left side equals right side. Left side equals right side. Okay, now that's not good enough just for 1. I have to do the same for the second equation. So I'm going to write y equals x minus 2. Left side equals, well, it's just y. So y is minus 5. And the right side is going to be x minus 2, and that's going to be minus 3 minus 2, and that's equal to minus 5. So left side equals right side. So I've checked. So if you get the same answer on both for both of them, left side equals right side, then that's good. You know, you're right. So you can always check your answer. The second equation, um, it's not equation, but it's the thing we want to solve here is these two equations, and obviously they're not in a very nice format to graph. So in order to find the x and y intercepts here, you could do it a couple of ways. You could find um, the x and y intercepts, like I said, and join them, or you could rewrite this into y equals mx plus b format. And that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to say 4y is equal to, I'm going to take 3x and put it on the other side of the equation, which means I change the sign and I move the 16 as well. So bringing it over the equal sign becomes plus, and then I'm going to divide by 4. So I have minus 3 over 4x plus 4. And that's not too hard to graph. This one, um, I'm going to bring the 2y over here this time because that's easier for me. So bring it over to the other side and switch sides. So I brought this over here and then I'm just writing it backwards. So 2y equals x minus 2. So I didn't move this. I just moved this one. So that's the only one that changes sign. And then I'm going to divide by 2. So I get 1 half x minus 1. Okay, so now I'm in the right format in order to graph both of these. So y-intercept is 4, so I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to put my dot right there, and my slope is minus 3 quarters. So remember, if it's minus, you're going to go down 3, right 4. So I go down 1, 2, 3, right 4, 1, 2, 3, Four. And I should be able to join these now. Mm -hmm. Down three, right four. So that's my line. I'm going to write it out the same way as it was given in the question in standard form. And the second line, I'm going to find my y-intercept of minus 1. I'm going to start here, and my slope is 1 over 2. So up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2. And look, that was a nice one because it landed exactly on the same point here. So I don't have to see if my line is straight. I, I'm there. So this point of intersection is 4 and 1. 
So I'm not going to do the check here because I don't have a lot of room and I don't want to waste your time. So if you plug in 4 here, 4 for x, that would give me minus 12, plus 16 would be 4, and y is 1, 4 times 1 is 4. So that worked for this one. Or you could plug it right back into the original equation. I could say x is 4, so 4 minus 2 times 1 is 2, and minus 2 more equals 0. So you can check that solution as well. Okay, so let's go on to some word problems. First one I'm going to do is a mixture problem, and these questions are pretty much from the Nelson textbook. Um, I find sometimes the mixture questions give everyone headaches, and it's because they're not explained very well in the textbook. So I'm going to do my best to make sure you understand how to do these. So it says, Jessica wants to make a blend of coffee that sells for $15, $15 per kilogram and weighs 200 kilograms. She's going to use Brazilian beans that sell for $12 a kilo and Ethiopian beans that sell for $17 a kilo. How many kilos of each kind of bean should she use? Okay, so the first thing, we need to make up two equations. So she wants to make beans. She's making beans here. She wants to make 200, did I write that in here? Yeah, 200 kilos. So we're going to say, we're going to make a let statement. Let x represent the number of kilograms of uh, Brazilian beans. And then y will be, let y represent the number of kilograms of Ethiopian beans. Beans for both of them. Beans, beans, coffee beans. Okay, so the first equation we know for sure is that she's going to use so many kilograms of Brazilian beans and so many kilograms of Ethiopian beans and they have to add up to 200 kilos. Okay, so there is another question just before this one in your textbook where they give you the graph and they ask you to set up the equation. So it's very similar to this one. Now the second equation is the one that causes some problems. And again, I didn't find it well explained in the textbook, so I'll try to make it as clear as possible. The next one we're going to um, figure out the number of kilos. So this is the number of kilos and this is the price. So we have to add in the, these 15, 12 and 17. So she has Ethiopian beans at $12 a kilo. So our Ethiopian beans are Y. No, sorry, Brazilian is 12. So we have 12 kilos, $12 times the number of kilos. So 12, this pencil is going to run out on me. I can feel it. $12 times the number of kilos. Remember, X was kilos. So $12, it's like me saying, I want to buy five pounds of coffee at two dollars so five times two is ten dollars that's what it's going to cost but this time we have twelve dollars times the number of kilos and for the Ethiopian beans they're seventeen dollars and the number of kilos equals now the problem is people have trouble trying to decide what should go here so I want you to think about it like this so this was money and this is pounds, we'll use the pound symbol. The number times the pounds, the number, or sorry, the, the value times the pounds equals, now I need dollars and pounds, right? I need to multiply these two things together. So what do I have on this side? What am I going to put here? So she wants to make 200 kilograms right here and she wants to sell it for $15 a kilo. So this is going to be 15 times 200. Okay, so in the other question that was right before this one, if you have the Nelson textbook, they had a thousand on your graph and that was because it was 80 times 1250 in case that was a question you got stuck on and are looking at this one to try to make sense of it. Okay, so 
That means my second equation is going to be 12x plus 17y equals 3,000, right? 15 times 200. So there's my two equations, this one and this one. Now I want to graph them to try to figure out where they're going to intersect because that's going to tell me how many kilos. So on this line, x is going to be representing my Brazilian beans in kilos. So this is kilograms of Brazilian. And this is going to be kilograms of Ethiopian. Okay, so if she made a mixture and she only used Ethiopian beans, then she would use 200 kilos of them because she's trying to make a mixture of 200. If she only used Brazilian, she would have 200. So that's what this equation gives you, which you could also solve by saying, let's find the x-intercept, set y to 0. Cover y, x is 200, y is 200. So there's my x and y intercepts, and that is sufficient for me to make a line. Right? This is my line, x plus y equals 200. And I'm going to draw a line through this one. Okay, it's not going to go through or past the x-axis here because you can't have a negative number. So it's just going to stop there and there. Now the second equation though, 12x plus 17y is 3000. I need to find the x and y intercepts. So for x-intercept, we're going to set y equal to 0. So if I do that, then I get 12x equals 3000. And that means x is going to be equal to 250, if you divide that out. Now for the y-intercept, we set x equal to 0. And that means I'm going to have 17y is equal to 3000. And this doesn't nearly give you as nice, as nice an answer. You get y is 176.5. So now you can see how this is going to be difficult when you're trying to solve using a graph, right? How accurate can I be? So if x is 250, sorry, the x-intercept is 250, and the y-intercept is 176. So y is my Ethiopian bean, so I'm going to have 176 here. So um, I went by 20s. <coughs> So 176 is going to be just below the 180. So I put a dot about here. And again, this is why I don't like graphing because it's so iffy. And 250, that's 20, 40, 50. The other line is going to be out here. And then I'm going to join these two here and then try to figure out how much of each bean I should be using. So now you have to estimate what this solution is here. And that's why graphing is so difficult. Like, how many is that? Well, it's not too bad because it looks like it's about 120 here. And this one is about 80, right? So this one, we got kind of lucky with this one, 120 and 80. So if you, if you figured 120 and 80, 120 and 80. So 120 plus 80 is 200. That worked nicely. But let's see how well it works into equation 2. So if x equals 120 and y is equal to 80, then I would have 12 times 120 plus 17 times 80. Is that equal to 3? thousand. Now I'm going to be in trouble because I don't have a calculator. So 12 12s are 24 or 144. So 1440. And um, this 17 times 8, 56, 5, 8, 1, 3, 6, 0. Is that equal to 3000? Uh, 10, 6, 10. It is. Okay. Hooray, hooray. So that means this is the correct solution, right? But again, 
Remember, we're graphing it, and sometimes if you're not really accurate, this doesn't work out so well. And again, we'll get into some better ways to solve equations. I think this is more important that you learn how to set up an equation for a mixed year. Okay, so the last question I want to do is distance speed time question. And this one says that Arthur drives 393 kilometers from Ottawa to a fishing lodge near Tomogamy. He travels at an average speed of 70 kilometers an hour to North Bay, then 50 kilometers an hour from North Bay to Tomogamy. The trip takes six hours. Now I used to drive that road often and no one is going 70 kilometers an hour or 50 from North Bay to Tomogamy, but it works for the question. You should go up there if you've never been to Tomogamy, it's beautiful. My hometown is Kirkland Lake, if some of you know where that is. So the trip takes six hours, write two equations. Okay, so we have time and time, distance, speed, time. Do you remember how if I went uh, five hours at 70 kilometers an hour, I would have driven 350 kilometers, right? You know how to do that. Okay, so let's make, let X represent um, time at... 70 kilometers per hour. Okay, so we need one for X and one for Y, and it's going to be the time at 50 kilometers per hour. How much time we spent doing each. Okay, so the trip takes six hours, so that means the first equation we're going to have is that X plus Y is equal to six hours. That's pretty easy. Now the second equation we're going to use the distance. So if I go 70 kilometers an hour, 70 kilometers an hour for a number of hours, that's going to give me a distance, right? So if I said I went 70 kilometers an hour for two hours, you would know that I went 140 kilometers. And the second one, I'm going to go 50 kilometers an hour for Y hours. And that's going to give me the total distance, because remember, this is going to give me distance, right? And I want that to be equal to 393 kilometers. So there's my two equations. Now, for graphing it, I need to find x and y intercepts here. So for this one, we either went all the way, so I did one, two, three, four, five, six. So I either go all the way um, six hours going one speed. So let's write this on our axis here. Y was 50 kilometer an hour, 50 kilometers an hour time at 50 kilometers an hour. And this is going to be time at 70 kilometers per hour. And so it's either six there or six here. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so that's the easy one to graph. Six and six. So this is x plus y equals six. And then this one, I need to find x and y intercepts. So if I divide... 393, I hope I did this somewhere because like I said, I don't have 393 divided by um, 50. That's going to give me 7.86 and 393 divided by 70 is going to give me 5.61. If you do this on your calculator okay so 5.61 this is that would be my y-intercept so y-intercept set x to 0 so y-intercept is 7.86 7.86 so 6 7.86 is going to be about here and the other one which is my x-intercept Let's write that out for x intercept set y equal to 0. So 70x is equal to 393 
and x is approximately equal to 5.61. Okay, I should let's write that out for the other one as well, just so you've got it. Set x equal to 0. So 50y equals 393, and y is equal to 7.86, approximately both of these. So I've got 7.86 up here, and the other one is 5.61. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5.5, 5.61 maybe. Okay, so now I'm going to join those two like this and there we go so you can see that this is going to be really difficult to figure out the solution to the last part of the question unless you had a graphing calculator so it's about here and it says so we graphed it now it says use a graph to determine the distance from North Bay to Tomogamy well, we can try to figure out how many hours it was. So this is at 50 kilometers will be my North Bay to Tomogamy. So I want to read the Y coordinate. So I'm going to dot that across here. So it's about here. And the X coordinate, of course, would be the other one, which would be about here. So one, two, three, four, this would be four, five. So this is more than four, probably, I don't know, 4.6 or something. And the Y, see this is 1.5. And in your textbook, it says it's 1.35. Now, I don't know how they could be so accurate looking at this. I mean, I would definitely say it's under one and a half. And this is, you know, I'm trying to be as accurate as possible. But the solution comes out to 1.35 hours. Now, I don't think whoever wrote your textbook actually estimated that from a graph. I think they probably used a different system. They probably solved using um, elimination or substitution to get such an accurate amount of time. Because I can't read that as 1.35. Can you? Okay, so if 1.35 hours, now that's not the distance, that's the time. So I have to do 50 times 1.35 to get approximately 67.5 kilometers. Okay, that's how many kilometers he went from North Bay to Tomogamy. Okay, so that's your lesson on um, solving by graphing. It's difficult, like I said, using a graph and being super accurate, but it's kind of, it's a skill. Um, it worked quite well for those um, first few questions that we did when we had the equations. I mean, that's, that's pretty easy to find these points off these graphs if you're, you know, even decently accurate and you can check them. But getting a 1.35 here, I think that's a, a pretty big stretch. And, and like I said, we'll find other ways of solving these in the next few lessons. So I hope that helped you. And um, please subscribe and tell your friends to join in. And you've got, if you're in grade 10, there's all of grade 11 and all two grade 12 courses there for you as well. All the best. Bye for now.